Hey you folks, I'm Kevin from Techable. Today I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks concerning the new changes to system preferences in Big Sur. The change you will likely see most on a day-to-day -day basis is probably going to be the control center. Uh, this is one of the key defining features of Big Sur. You have several options for control, uh, such as playing with your sound, or uh, as you can see here, I have a video queued up, which I can Reset. hit play. I'm Kevin from Techable, and today- I'm And it'll start playing. Of course, the, the window isn't open there, but that's all right. Or, you know, mess with uh, whatever Wi-Fi settings or turning Bluetooth on and off. It's all here to be nice, quick, and convenient. Now, clicking on any of these control panels will show some more granular options for what you are able to do. Uh, you can switch to headphones if you have headphones plugged in. If you click on display, you have a quick access to night shift. Uh, if you're working really late at night like I often do and want to avoid some of that blue light. But if you use one of these controls frequently, you can click and drag it onto the menu bar at the top for even faster access. But you can also put things into the control center. So if I go to system preferences, and then dock and menu bar. You see everything contained within the control center. And then a few more options right here, like accessibility shortcuts. You just click show in control center, and there it is. In the control center, you have access to all different kinds of things. I can turn on color filters or uh, invert colors if you want to. <laughs> You want to get freaky. You can place a lot of different modules within the control center and it's just a really nice option for you to be able to access stuff quickly without having to go through all of your system preferences. While we're here in dock and menu you may have noticed that the battery indicator no longer displays your battery's percentage by default uh, which is probably an effort by Apple to clean up uh, the menu bar at the top, but personally I like to see the number, uh, the percentage of battery you have left, so all you have to do uh, to see that, if you're like me, is hit show percentage in the battery section. Another default preference is the startup sound when you boot up your Mac. Uh, it's back and by default turned on. Now when we could safely work in public spaces like libraries, uh, the last thing I wanted when I was booting up my Mac as a, as a very insecure person is turning a bunch of heads with a, a, a loud Mac sound. So uh, if you're like me and don't want that attention, you can go into sound and then uncheck play sound on startup. In this section, you can also toggle on play feedback when volume is changed makes a little tone, gives you a preview of what the volume is going to be like before you hit play and blast your ears uh, with whatever video or music you're listening to. Now over in the accessibility options, we can go to spoken content. You may be familiar with some of these, but the new one that has been added is speak typing feedback, which was borrowed from the iOS. With this enabled, if you are typing in Safari or on your notes, uh, what is being typed will be read back to you. So I'll hop in here and say, I want a burrito. Pretty simple, right? Inside the options for this, you can also have it uh, echo characters that you type or echo words. If you're a fast typer, you can make a funky beat. <laughs> Stop, computer. It's it's there if you need it. Speak announcements will read aloud any notifications that you receive. Speak selection will read aloud things that you highlight. So to use this, all you have to do is highlight some text and then press the keyboard shortcut, which you can set yourself. The default is option escape, and it will read aloud what you have highlighted. In this video, we will explore factory resetting any Mac. The process in newer APFS OS is a bit more complicated than previous operating systems. So there you go. Now a drawback with these that I've noticed is that they don't work on every site or app. Uh, notably, Google Docs does not work with any of these, the speak selection or the speak typing feedback I couldn't get to work. Another accessibility option, while not entirely new, uh, if you didn't know, there is a voice control option which allows you to use your device through voice commands. So the first thing you have to do is enable that. 
Normally for this to work, you go into item numbers in the overlay section, and then you speak aloud the number on screen uh, that is associated with the thing you can click on. Click 47. And there we go, we've uh, hit Twitter. You don't need to see my Twitter, it's all sad. So before that is how this system operated, but now you can also toggle on numbered grid, which allows you to interact with parts of the screen that may not be recognized by the other number system. Zoom in 19. Zoom out 19. Now on to general settings. By default, your finder windows are tinted the color of your desktop background. And you can toggle this on and off right here. The finder window has kind of a pinkish color based on the sort of default Big Sur background that we have here. All right, so now I've got it set to a different uh, default picture for Big Sur. And you can see it turns uh, just a little bit purple along with the background. Before you could set one color for accents, which are buttons and icons and other type of user interface elements. You could also set one highlight color, uh, the color that you see when you select text. The new options, which are on by default, are called multicolor and accent color. If you leave multicolor selected, then your accents are going to be determined by the preferences of the app. Whatever the developers uh, set for that app, that is what the uh, colors will be. So for instance, if I go into notes, uh, the default that you can see is uh, this sort of yellowish color. And then if I go into Finder, you will see that the icons are blue. And when I click on different files, it is also blue. Now, if I change that to pink, you can see that the change is universal. All the buttons in general here have turned pink. The icons have turned pink. When I select files, they are pink. And this is also the case in notes. I'm gonna switch this back to multicolor. And you'll see that in highlight color, it says accent color. That just means that it's going to keep the highlight color within whatever app you're using the same as the default for that app. But I could change that to be whatever I want. So I've opened up Messenger here on a fresh account. Uh, I didn't want to pester any of the people I normally pester on Messenger. And here I have a message to myself. You can see that I am highlighted here in blue and highlighting text is also blue. Now, if I go into the preferences once again and change that to orange, you'll see this accent is still blue, but my highlight is orange. Whenever you change the accent color, the highlight color will change as well along with it. You just have to uh, change the highlight color again once you have made the change up here. Let us know what changes you like and dislike about this operating system, and be sure while you're down there to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to Techable. Thanks so much for watching, and stay informed out there, friends.